What can I say? I got a nice rack. I've got a confession to make. I am a hoarder of wood. I've got a problem. I've got a lot of long lumber that needs some organization. And this is the wall that I've decided to do it on. The last lumber rack I made in the old shed built it like a tank. You could support a Buick on that thing. But I learned that that is simply not necessary. So this time around, I wanted to come up with something that was cheap, easy, and fast. And I definitely wanted to make sure that there were materials that I could easily get my hands on. With that being said, we're gonna do this with three quarter inch EMT conduit and some two by fours. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now, uh, I did not come up with this design. I've seen this all over Pinterest, all over YouTube. This is simply going to be my version with my own spin on it. And in true Michael Builds fashion, you know that we have to find a fun way to test the strength out of this thing. So stick around because this is going to be a simple design that is quick, cheap, and easy. But first things first, we have got to paint this wall. that that is a sexy sexy color <laughs> don't bother asking me what color it is because this is mine it is all mine i am not sharing this color with you it's mine the absolute best thing that you can do with long lumber storage is go vertical with it but we're also going to make it very versatile so that it will grow with you and your craft now, I've got seven of these eight foot two by fours, and we're gonna space them 16 inches apart. That should allow us to store eight foot, 10 foot boards, no problem. And the best part is we're not even gonna have to cut these. So let me show you how I'm gonna lay these boards out. I'm sure you already know this, but the quickest way I know how to lay out some boards is to uh, do as many at once and mark them all at the same time. Obviously, you wanna start off by making the ends nice and flush, then clamp them together so that way they don't move around on you while you're laying out your marks. Now, I wanna mark the location for these quarter inch by six inch lag screws. Uh, obviously, you can use whatever brand you want, but this particular brand is Spax, cause uh, I love the Torx heads, and I think that Phillips heads and flat heads are the devil. <laughs> We're gonna start off with three inches, 36 inches, 66 inches, and 93 inches. Now, we're gonna mark off where the rods are gonna go. And I'm gonna use a different color so that I know the difference between the two. First one's gonna be at six inches, 20 inches, 34 inches, 48 and a half inches, 62 inches, 76 inches, and 90 inches. Then I'm gonna use my uh, trusty combination square to mark across the seven boards. And then, obviously, you wanna mark all the centers of all your marks. I'm gonna do it with a combination square. By the way, I feel like it is very important to mention to mark the orientation of your boards. I'm marking mine B for bottom, these boards are not symmetrical. Also, it's gonna become very important because some of these holes are drilled on an angle. Don't forget to mark your boards. All right, well. All right, since we have the drill press table at zero degrees right now, I'm gonna take this opportunity to drill the uh, holes for the lag screws. I'm gonna be using a uh, 5 16 inch drill bit.
Now we are going to drill the holes for the three quarter inch EMT conduit. I am going to be using a uh, one inch Fostner bit. Now, if you wanted to save yourself some money, you can absolutely get this done with a one inch spade bit, but uh, not gonna be as clean, but it'll get the job done. If you're doing this with a drill press, which I highly recommend, just tilt your table at 10 degrees. You're definitely gonna wanna make yourself a, a quick, simple little 90 degree jig like this. Not only will this help you stay centered on the board, but this back fence will give you something great to clamp onto. We are gonna be going about two and five eighths inches deep on this, so let's get it all set up and start drilling some holes. Again, don't forget to pay attention to the orientation of your boards. You don't want the angle pointing in the opposite direction. That'll be bad. Got another confession to make. My drill press only has two inches of travel. <laughs> so, I gotta make up the extra five eighths by hand. For the rails, I chose three quarter inch EMT conduit. What I really wanted to do was go with the, uh, the black pipe with uh, this really cool cap. I think it would have looked really, really cool. And it would have been like five times as strong, but it also would have been like five times the price. You can get seven of these for the price of one of these. You can cut this however you want. I'm gonna use a reciprocating saw to cut these and I'm gonna cut them at 17 inches. With a 10 foot length, I should be able to get seven pieces out of one 10 foot length. Oh, and don't forget to clean up the gnarly edges with either a grinder or a file. We have got all the holes drilled for the EMT conduit. We've got all the holes drilled for the lag screws. We've got all of the three quarter inch EMT rods cut at 17 inches a piece. The only thing left to do for this project is to just take it one step further. We have got to stain the wood and paint the rods black. Obviously this is a super unnecessary step but I gotta do it. I just, I just gotta do it. By the time I'm done with this, we're gonna make it look so trendy and so hipster that you're just gonna wanna back right out of this coffee house. Since I am gonna be staining the wood, I want to sand it down, take care of the rough edges, and I definitely, definitely wanna get rid of these uh, factory markings. So, let's get to work. All right, with the rods, I'm not gonna get too fancy with these guys. I'm just gonna spray paint it with this uh, Rust-Oleum Protective Enamel. I'm gonna do it in the satin finish. Now, I understand that you need to use a primer with bare metal, especially galvanized metal, but I spray painted this with no primer and the paint's sticking just fine. Uh, it's like my old boss, he always used to tell me, we're not making a piano here. I'm saving a little bit of money here and it, it works just fine. You do what you want, but I think everything's gonna be okay here. By the way, by the way, if you have a lot of spray painting to do, uh, it can be very tough on your fingers. Uh, this, this cheap little handle just makes it so much easier. I'll leave a link down below. Very inexpensive and, and it will save you a little bit of pain. It's one of those things that you think you're never gonna use, but I use it all the time. Right now, I am drawing some plum reference lines for the outside edge of my two by fours or styles are going to ride along, but I cannot stress enough how important it is to find the studs behind these walls and hit them. 
Do not bother with drywall anchors or mollies. Uh, not with this project. Just remember that stud finders typically find the center of the board, not the edge. So here's my edge, here's my center. Just bear that in mind when you're marking your layout lines. How do you know that your stud finder works? Yeah, it works. <laughs> oh, that one never gets old. All you gotta do now is line up your two by four style with that reference line that you drew and screw it in. Yeah, I polyurethaned it. <laughs> I know it's unnecessary, but I just I had to. Look how pretty it is. Look how pretty. Uh, in case you're interested, I used a uh, satin indoor polyurethane. By the way, quick handy tip, if your boards are bowed like mine were, if you secure the top and the bottom screws first, you could actually bend the middle of the board to your reference line and secure it. After you're done securing it, the board will be nice and straight. It's a good tip to keep in your back pocket. And now for the final and easiest step of this project, installing the rails. And since we have this 10 degree angle here, there's absolutely no need to secure these in any way, shape or form. Especially with some weight, these guys aren't going anywhere. So what do you think about our cool little project? Now, I know that I took the quick and easy right out of this project by painting and staining it. But in the end, personally, I think it was worth it. But you could take this three day project, turn it into a one day project, simply by taking out those two steps. This simple design lends itself to all sorts of customization and different possibilities by simply adding and subtracting these rods. You can place them in different spots. You can fill up the whole wall with the rods if you want to. You can even take away or add some of these styles for either more racking or less racking. It's up to you. But one thing that was important to me was that I wanted this particular shelf to be 48 and a half inches off the ground because I knew that I wanted to be able to store four foot sheeting goods underneath this particular shelf. If I wanna get a full eight foot by four foot sheet under here, I can do that if I want and still have plenty of storage up above. Now let's talk about cost. This particular project with lumber being at the cost it is sometimes double, triple what it used to cost, you're looking at about $137. 123 if you take out the paint, the stain, the polyurethane. If lumber prices go back to where they normally used to be, then you're looking at about 100 bucks for all of this. Now with all that being said, in the end, if this is not your cup of tea and you're not looking to do all this work, I did find a decent storage rack on Amazon for only 57 bucks. Now, you're not gonna get anywhere near the square footage that you are here, but it will get the job done. So I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. Time to put some lumber on this lumber rack. Time to test out the strength. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I really felt like it was gonna buckle by now. So uh, I have to go out to the old shed to go get more bags of concrete. I really didn't think we were gonna get this far. <laughs> um, I don't have any more concrete. <laughs> let's do it again, only this time, let's bring the weight and the leverage towards us this time. Let's see what we can make happen.
I seriously expected that to happen after maybe three or four bags. Come check this out. Yeah, bent at the rods, but the wood is still pretty good. Got a little split. I don't know if you can see it. Got a little split, but that's, that's it. Nice. Now, I know that each bag does not weigh exactly 60 pounds or exactly 55 pounds, but uh, I think you get the point. Now, imagine if you had that weight distributed over seven rails. I'm just saying, I, I, I ain't no geologist, but uh, do with that what you will. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it, and I'll see you in the next video. Whoa! I'm okay, I'm okay. Oh.